Hi guys, my name is Annabelle from Horizon Cosplay and today we are unboxing my new sewing machine. Now I say new sewing machine, but let's face it, this box doesn't exactly look new and that is because it isn't. How did I get this sewing machine? Well, quite frankly, I went into a shop and it was a charity shop and they had this on display. And so I brought it because I have a problem with gathering Singer sewing machines. If you wanna see the rest of my collection, please check out this video here where you can tour all of them. And now this is a new one. So I haven't actually seen it since it came home with me. It has been a few days. So let's open this puppy up and see what she looks like. Ooh. Okay, so it looks like this folds down. She's a hand crank no motor on the back and she is beautiful she is really beautiful let's see if she works oh yeah everything looks good all righty so according to this little tag here she is a model 201k in a nice tan color honestly she's so shiny like there's a few few marks she'll need a bit of a clean but honestly it doesn't look like she's been used for too much let's see if there's anything in the pocket. Empty packet of Singer sewing needles, always a good thing. Little bit of silver thread. Uh, lots of off cuts of silver thread. Someone got a bit enthusiastic, I think. Okay, we have a random piece of paper that talks about a Singer sewing threader, but we don't have any sewing threader. Ah, here are the needles. They actually do look like they might not have been used. I think they might just have fallen out the, um, yeah, no, they have because the back's completely come off. So those are good. They can go into a pin cushion and I will gradually use them for my sewing machines. Always like a few more sewing machine needles. Is there anything underneath? No, but she is reasonably clean. I suppose we should date her. So when you're trying to date a Singer sewing machine, they always come with a little number attached to them. I'm not actually sure if they still do, I'm presuming so. And it normally has a letter in the front. For instance, this girl's number is EM246284. Now the EM means that it was made in Clydebank, Scotland. And the best website I've found for dating these machines is called Ismax International Singer Sewing Machine Company. And basically we can scroll down, click on the EM series, and then look up her number. 10 seconds later. This tells me she is a 201k, which we knew because of the tag anyway. There were 15,000 of these made in Clydebank, Scotland. And this batch, which was done on March 1st, 1957. Oh, wow. Okay, so she was from the 50s. That's pretty interesting. Now, the other really interesting thing about this machine, if I just chuck my laptop over there, and actually you guys are in the perfect position to see it, is that this was a time when the machines and the motors were actually sold quite separately, the 50s. So a lot of people still using hand cranks. In fact, my treadle machine is also from the 50s. So that just shows there. So she does have one vintage bobbin, some nice green thread there. By the looks of things, she does actually work. I feel like we should try sewing with her. We've just got some white thread, we'll use that. So let's hook her up, see how well she sews. So we have both the bobbin and the normal thread done. I suppose we need some scrap fabric. Do I have any in my drawers? Here we go. So we have a little scrap of fabric here. So let's lower the press of it and go. Mm, well, the thread seems to have come out if nothing else. Hmm. Okay, well that ain't working for some reason. Maybe the tension's too high, so let's try lowering that. It's funny, you sometimes wonder if charity shops ever actually check to see if these things work, to be honest. I mean, maybe it's the thread, it just seems to be snapping. No, gone again. Could it be that the bobbin's in incorrectly? I did just take it out, but... No, it still snapped. I thought it was just that I was turning the wheel the wrong way for a second there, and we did almost get a stitch. Let's try increasing the stitch length. The tension really is already pretty low. Right, I'm trying threading the needle the other way. Oops, that's going backwards. 
Ah, have we maybe got something here? Well, I mean, that's closer to a stitch than it was before. Genuinely, no idea what's wrong. Very annoying. So this is interesting. I was just having a quick Google to see if I could fix the stitching problem. And it's come up with this article or blog post which says the Singer 201K, sewing machine fit for a princess and used by one. So these machines, the 201K models, were made between 1928 apparently and 1963. Okay, so my camera battery just ran out. So what you missed was that we discovered that the 201K was actually given to Queen Elizabeth on her wedding day from the Singer factory. And for a long time afterwards, lots and lots of people wanted the same model that the Queen had because if it's good enough for the queen, it's good enough for you. I also have re-threaded the machine following an online tutorial to make sure that I did it right. And we're kind of getting stitches now. And my I, as soon as I turn the camera on, the thread snaps. So what we're gonna do is presume that this thread is utterly rubbish because it, I mean, in all fairness, it looks super cheap. So I probably just picked up a bad one. Uh, so we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna I know, let's use this silver thread that it came from. There's, there's not a lot left. I don't think I can do too much with it. It snapped this thread too, and this is like proper silco stuff like what I usually use. So I, I just don't understand what's going on there. So the 201 models are actually like one of the best machines apparently this thing I ever made. I feel like this one. Not necessarily a bad example. There's definitely something going on here though. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, not 100% sure what it is. No. So the second I go fast, the thread just seems to snap. Before it snapped, we got a couple of real pretty stitches there. Don't know if you can see, just, just here between my fingers, there's some really nice stitches. But, I mean, that's what, two centimeters of stitching going really, really slow? Well, I did just learn one interesting thing. So the original 201Ks were made from cast iron and then they swapped over to using an alloy. I can tell you right now, because this isn't that heavy, that this is probably an alloy. So that's interesting, but also not what we're looking for. So what I'm doing with this stitching is I've got the bobbin case open, just so I can check that everything's going round properly. Well, I've got to be honest, I, I am gonna give up right this second. I'm not saying it doesn't work, I'm not saying it won't work, I'm just saying that right this second, I have no idea what is going wrong and I need to go do some research to find out. And sat here on my phone trying to figure it out is, is not gonna be a productive use of my time, uh, as much as it would probably be mildly entertaining for you lot. So, it, rather than trying to get it to work, let's just talk a little bit more about this machine. <laughs> and also, if you have any ideas that could help me, any things I could check, please feel free to tell me in the comments down below. I love getting advice. I am currently trying to learn how to repair old sewing machines, and I was hoping to do a servicing class at some point if it ever runs, because, you know, the plague is a thing. But until then, and until I figure this out, this beauty is just gonna be a bit of a display piece. I mean, to be fair, she's a pretty gorgeous display piece though, isn't she? Anyway, now all that's sorted, let's give you some more fun facts about the Singer 201K model. So one really good thing is that after World War II, Spitfires were, well, not needed, we weren't at war anymore, and the Singer actually got the government contract for them to recycle Spitfires into sewing machines, which is just really awesome to think that, you know, this metal, could have potentially also been in a plane in World War II. I mean, who knows? I don't suppose there's any way to find out, or at least not right this second. Again, if you know, leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Another really fun fact is that the 201s in the 50s were actually Singer's most expensive sewing machine, which is pretty funny considering that I bought this for probably about 20 pound, which for sewing machine prices is actually quite cheap, but I'd normally expect to pay about 50 pound for a sewing machine unless it's quite a large bulky one that someone is getting rid of just because they want it out of their house, in which case I definitely have gotten a few for free. So I'm gonna read this off my phone to make sure I give you guys the correct numbers here because there is a lot of numbers involved in this and I want to pass on the correct information. So apparently in 1950s, the Singer 201 in its basic case would probably cost around 20 pounds and 10 cents, which doesn't sound like a lot today. However, 
This actually represented nearly 64 weeks wages for the average woman at the time. Most people would buy them in layaways or, you know, kind of like how we'd buy a car today where you pay it off gradually. And that is incredible. Like this machine represented a massive financial investment for some people. And I mean, that's it. it's incredible. That actually just kind of blew my mind. I'm not going to lie. Like imagine 64 weeks wages on one machine. You would have to use it for business. You'd have to use it to make a living. Otherwise, well, why why buy one really? That That's incredible. <laughs> Very, very incredible. So I'm just gonna quickly put on screen an advert that I've just found for like literally this sewing machine. It is this model and brand and type and even color. And let's just have a quick read of it. This lightweight streamlined Singer 201 is a real joy to use. It's a full sized all electric machine which operates with much less noise and much less vibration. Now, I did mention before, this one actually does not have a motor. By the looks of things, it never has had a motor. There's definitely no marks where one would have been attached. So I'm guessing they probably requested to have this machine as just a hand crank if it was from the 50s. Either that or someone's done a very good job of getting rid of it because it's definitely left no marks because, I don't know, broke down or something along the lines. Back to the ad though. And what a blessing this is. Yes, having a Singer sewing machine is definitely a blessing, especially with how much they damn well cost. Quickly, effortlessly, the Singer 201 will do everything you ask of it, and it's perfect for the beginner or for the experienced user. But get to your nearest Singer Sewing Center to show you the many features of the 201 that speed up and simplify dozens and one sewing jobs. Not sure about dozens and one. Does that mean it only does seven things? <laughs> Mounted on a beautifully polished wooden base. Yes, it is actually very nice and very polished. There's an extension leaf as well. Yes, there is. And it's actually a very convenient one. A lot of my other sewing machines, like it comes, you have to slide out of the box, clip it in. The fact that this one just folds down is automatically there is actually really, really nice. The portable version of the 201 is supplied with a smart two-tone carry cover. The cabinets with which the 201 can also be supplied are shown on page 10. So we obviously have these hand fabric sides and some black piping around the edges. Not sure I'd necessarily call it the two-tone, but it is very, very cool and it's actually wood which I didn't actually think to check earlier, but it is actually wood and it has some nice clips and there's all this uh, felt, that's the word I'm looking for, all this felt here so that when it sits on the thing, it doesn't damage or leave marks like this sewing machine has done to my table. Please don't tell Ben. So just to see if I can make it so, I've actually just looked up the official Singer 201K manual and the manual starts saying, you own a machine with a tradition of superior craftsmanship. A tradition you will recognise in the smooth running of this sewing machine, which operates either forwards or backwards and forms a perfect long stitch. Oh, and apparently when you become the owner of a new Singer sewing machine, you are entitled to sewing lessons. Where are my free sewing lessons? I would like some. Okay, well, with that figured out, even if it's not working, I suppose we should really call this a day. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, especially if you want to see me fix this machine. Otherwise, like I said, please leave your comments down below and tell me different things to try because I am more than open to ideas because I really want this baby working. Let's look how beautiful she is. And the other thing is that I always name my sewing machines. I actually don't think I said this in my sewing machine collection video, but all of them actually have like names that were common in the years that they were made. So if you have any name suggestions, please let me know and I will pick one. And this is what we will christen her when she's actually working. Otherwise guys, I will see you next Wednesday for another sewing video. Have a beautiful day and I will see you then. Bye. Really did just scratch the table turning that around. And just if anyone was wondering how I hide the scuff marks from my husband when I damage the table because of these heavy machines. A little bit of sieve and a quick polish. And mostly, mostly they're invisible. And he hasn't figured it out yet.